It's been over four weeks since this guy allegedly cheated investors out of billions of dollars by running a Ponzi scheme at FTX. However, it appears that the mainstream media is incapable of covering anything negative about him. Why is it the mainstream media swooning over this guy? And why is so hard for the media to criticize SBF and FTX for their fraudulent act at worst and gross negligence at best? Let's find out. If you're even vaguely familiar with the world of cryptocurrencies, you've probably heard about FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed, or SBF, and the company's recent demise. FTX was one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, as well as the fastest growing. A few weeks ago, the FTX exchange was facing a severe liquidity crisis and was unable to secure a last minute bailout. The company was compelled to declare Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The insolvency affected millions of investors, wiping away many portfolios. Bankman Freed openly admitted to committing fraud. Without their knowledge, FTX loaned customer deposits to Alameda Research, which is FTX's sister hedge fund. Although, SBF described this as an error caused by, quote, confusing internal labeling. FTX terms and service states that customer funds will never be lent to other financial institutions or utilized by FTX for proprietary trades. Nonetheless, client monies were loaned to the hedge fund, Alameda Research. The underlying reason behind FTX's demise is complex and intricate. However, that is not the subject of this video. Cold Fusion made an amazing video on the FTX fallout. Check out that video, link in the description. According to court records, FTX's new turnaround CEO, John Ray remarked, Never in my experience have I seen such a catastrophic collapse of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. In the same court records, FTX admitted to having more than 1 million debtors, the vast majority of whom were customers who lost money when SBF took it and leased it to Alameda Research for its proprietary trading operation. SBF's conduct were obviously irresponsible and allegedly fraudulent. However, it is deeply disturbing that mainstream media outlets such as the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Washington Post, Forbes, and many others have handled the FTX scandal and subsequent meltdown with kid gloves, refusing to call out SBF and his inner circle for misusing and abusing customer funds. Instead, these newspapers characterized the FTX debacle as a series of honest blunders made by highly ambitious and eccentric entrepreneurs that follow the effective altruism movement. According to the media, Bankman Freed and other insiders, such as Caroline Ellison, former CEO of Alameda Research, were only trying to do good for the world and will no longer be able to do so. The Wall Street Journal, for example, ran a story that emphasized Bankman Freed's philanthropic intentions while glossing over the reality that he misappropriated client monies. They discussed how his law professor parents educated him to be altruistic and how he stopped eating meat because of the miseries of factory farm animals. The journal also investigated the FTX Foundation and its future fund, examining how many charitable organizations are no longer able to collect on promised grants. They stated that, due to the failure of FTX, universities and research labs all across the world will not receive their funds and that this is a squandered chance for SBF's charitable character. The Wall Street Journal never condemned Bankman Freed for his activities at FTX. While it mentioned multi-million dollar losses experienced by charitable organizations, it forgot to mention the numerous billions stolen from FTX clients who were assured their accounts were safe. Similarly, according to the Washington Post, SBF and his brother Gabe intended to make a difference after the global pandemic hit the planet in 2020. They discussed the brothers investing $70 million in research, campaign donations, and other activities to avert the next epidemic. 
However, they deliberately avoided mentioning that the charity gifts were, in fact, supported by money collected from customers of FTX. The article went on to say that the brothers will no longer be able to fund their pandemic-related charitable endeavors. The New York Times has published some of the most egregious reports. The author of one widely panned puff piece portrayed an image of an ambitious but overextended entrepreneur who made mistakes but did it legally. They indicated that, with a little more oversight, or perhaps a larger team, these costly mistakes could have been avoided. They even referred to SBF as a philanthropist who allowed his philanthropic dreams to grow too big. They portrayed him as an ambitious benefactor who wanted to accomplish too much and lamented, wish we'd bitten off a lot less. The scathing reporting characterized the embattled ex-CEO as simply being too busy and overworked to effectively supervise what was going on in his businesses. FTX and Alameda Research are said to be inextricably intertwined. They are not, however, defined as connected parties, who should have obvious limits when doing business with each other. It was never permissible to mix monies between the two parties, while FTX's assets were mostly customer funds. Instead, the piece rationalized Bankman Freed's defense of the tainted relationship by emphasizing Alameda's importance as a market maker and liquidity provider to FTX. The Times then published another story about SBF's political and charity contributions. However, they forgot to mention that the fund used for political and philanthropic donations was not created by Bankman Freed in the first place. Caroline Ellison, the other opponent in the FTX debacle and former CEO of Alameda Research, received a similar puff piece from Forbes. It began with glowing praise for the now-fired executive. They wrote about her math wizardry, Harry Potter fandom, and risk-taking personality. The article went on to detail her rise from Stanford's top student to Alameda Research, where she eventually took over as CEO of the proprietary trading firm. It talked about her love of math, polyamory, and, of course, effective altruism. But, where is the mainstream media's infatuation for SBF and FTX coming from? According to Teddy Schleifer, a journalist, SBF donated money to Vox, a progressive news website founded by liberal bloggers Ezra Klein and Matt Iglesias. Vox Media also owns a number of other publications, including New York Magazine. SBF gave a $3.2 million grant to The Intercept, which had already received $500,000 at the time of FTX's demise and was set to receive the remainder in the coming years. SBF also contributed to Samava, a new journalistic project founded by Ben Smith, a former media columnist for The New York Times and the editor-in-chief of BuzzFeed. SBF was in the middle of awarding ProPublica a whooping $5 million when FTX failed. This was supposed to promote research into the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic and how to prevent future pandemics. However, SBF appears to believe that his funding of these causes is largely for show. In Twitter direct messages with a Vox reporter, when asked about ethics, he described ethics as mostly a front. SBF said, yeah, that's not all of it but it's a lot. If SBF saw his generous donations as a cover for something else, one has to question what that something else was. Is it possible that SBF believed that he was purchasing goodwill and favorable coverage? As it happened, he was the subject of numerous gushing magazine features and was commonly referred to as the white knight of crypto. Most of the news organizations and outlets named in this video had previously produced commendable journalism. And the fact that they took money from a scammer doesn't change that. But for all the progressive and mainstream worry about billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk corrupting the news cycle, the coverage of SBF seems a little complacent. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a like and let us know what do you think about media's treatment of SBF and FTX fallout. Thank you for watching.